Hey, uh, next up, uh, we have Felipe Valserda, who will be talking um, about witnessing. All right, hello everyone. Let's talk about building this thing that we all seem to need, a witness network. Yes. Okay, who am I? Um, I'm Filippo Sorda. I uh, work on, uh, on Go and uh, I've been maintaining the cryptography packages in Go, so uh, the crypto CLS implementation and, and all that, along with a number of other people uh, like uh, Roland Maker, uh, Katie Hawkman, and many others over the years, and I've been doing that since uh, 2018. Until 2022, I was doing that at Google on the uh, Go team. Uh, and uh, while it, uh, at Google on the Go team, I worked on the design of the Go checksum database, which uh, you heard about earlier in the day, and is uh, uh, a transparency log of uh, all the module versions that the Go uh, client uh, fetches. And it's uh, useful to guarantee that there is only one uh, possible value for a certain module uh, name and version. And that's what we do instead of um, assigning uh, packages or anything that requires uh, key management from the, uh, pack, uh, from the module authors. Uh, worked on uh, a few other unrelated things. Uh, and uh, it says until 2022 because uh, I am now an independent open source maintainer uh, and I'm funded by a number of clients that get access to, um, um, to me as an advisor and get to fund the ongoing maintenance of these things. But that's another story. Uh, the work I'm uh, doing on transparency is done in the context of the SIGSUM uh, project. There are a few folks from, uh, from the project here, uh, and it's been uh, done in collaboration with a number of other folks in the uh, ecosystem, including the Google Trust Fabric uh, <laughs> folks, uh, and generally trying to co uh, coordinate it. Uh, great. So transparency. We all have uh, an idea of transparency, <coughs> so I'm not going to introduce it, but I will give you uh, my mental model for uh, transparency. How I think about transparency is that transparency provides accountability for data. It does uh, th the same thing really that open source uh, does for uh, code. I don't actually believe that open source means that you can go review every line of your uh, dependencies because no one does that. But it means that since the source is open, there is a, uh, accountability for what goes into the software. So when it's time to actually go and figure out why something does something, you can go to the commit history and say, hey, why? We don't have that for data. Transparency gets, the, uh, gets us that for data. Uh, you can uh, go to Google and say, hey, why is that version 1.23 of philippo.io slash mlchem768? I didn't publish that. Uh, and then we can have a whole conversation. Conversation, well, I, uh, I think that's a, um, a critical point because ultimately, transparency is about uh, staking reputation. Just like if somebody introduces a backdoor in an open source project, there isn't a technical record for that. The, there is nothing stopping, uh, the, there is not a git pre, uh, commit hook that stops all the backdoors. Uh, but at the same time, if somebody introduces something in open source project that, that should not be there, we can have a conversation about that. Uh, and there's accountability for that. Uh, transparency does the same thing. Uh, so I think about transparency in terms of staking reputation. Uh, a log operator stakes the reputation on the correct operation of the log. A claimant, a claimant or somebody who submits a, um, a record or in the case uh, that I like very much of uh, trees that are operated by the same entity that's making claims, uh, the log operator and claimant makes, uh, stakes the reputation on the things they're adding to the log. Uh, Google stakes the reputation on not putting into the Go checksum database something that uh, was not actually honestly fetched over HTTPS and so on and so on and so on. Um, and if, if uh, there's misbehavior, there would be a conversation and that's the thing we are trying to enable. Uh, great, so what's the fundamental thing that can undermine our ability to have that conversation and fundamentally undermine the whole thing we are doing? That's split view attacks. Uh, if I can uh, give one view of the tree to you and one uh, uh, view of the uh, tree to everybody else, now I'm not accountable for what I just showed him. Uh, because what I, uh, I showed him will not reach anybody who can do that analysis. This is, uh, there's a parallel here with, um, again, with open source. The fact that you have access to the source is not worth that much. What's worth a lot is that everybody is looking at the same source and can look at it also retroactively in the future. Because you're probably not reviewing the source of everything you're running, but the fact that it's there, it's public, and can be reviewed in the future, that's what we're going for. And that's what we're going for with data. So split view attacks, catastrophic for that. Uh, 
this is nothing new. Uh, none of this was unknown to anybody w working in the space. So there's a number of solutions for uh, Street View attacks. Um, and there's uh, non-cryptographic uh, solutions like um, uh, the S3 object lock um, uh, scheme that um, uh, Meta is using, which I think is great. Uh, but it's n it, that depends on uh, switchy, soft, uh, uh, con uh, contractual, um, uh, and product features. In terms of um, cryptographic or cryptography system uh, solutions, we have a local consistency. Uh, that's what we are uh, counting on for the Go Checks and database. This might be the weakest one, really. Uh, and it's the idea that um, you keep the uh, three head on your uh, laptop and you check consistency of the three uh, with a compact proof every time you get a new, uh, a new thing. Uh, and if that ever stops being true, then uh, you know that something went wrong. And if you uh, roam enough uh, across networks or across proxies, there's a chance maybe the attacker will not be able to consistently keep you on a split uh, tree. If that sounds hand wavy, it's very hand wavy. Uh, <laughs> is it wishful thinking? No, I think there's value to it, but uh, uncomfortable. Um, then there's ex post facto gossip. And in that category, I put everything you do afterwards. So you got an SCT, and afterwards you send it over some uh, key, uh, anonymity preserving uh, system to uh, auditor, or uh, after you got a three head, you gossip about it with your peers in a peer-to-peer -peer network. All of the things that you do after you've accepted uh, uh, the proof. And then there's witness co-signing. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, extensively, but that's uh, where you get uh, the logs uh, get their three heads signed by other parties who say, yeah, that's consistent with everything else I've seen uh, so far from, from this log. Now, what's the problem? Consistency, local consistency, and gossip don't work for anything that's defending the system against full compromise. Um, it, and I'm going to uh, use the GoChessan database as an example again because I'm really not calling out anyone because my system has this, uh, uh, <laughs> this issue. And the GoChessan database, let's be honest here, you fetch code to run it. You could run it uh, and you could build it without running it and we provide that as a security um, uh, property and that breaks all the time. Don't run Git or GCC on untrusted uh, uh, content. But anyway, different story. So most of the times, you fetch a Go module, you run Go test, and Go test will execute the code from the module you just fetched. So if I can fake the content of the Go checks and database, I can inject code. You're going to run that code. And that code can have a function in it called delete uh, checkpoint uh, traces, or delete gossip uh, function, or delete or replace a fake SDH with a uh, honest SDH. And that's it. Uh, that as if your uh, transparency system is protecting against full system uh, compromise, it can't use post facto um, uh, countermeasures to split view attacks because a, split view, a successful split view attack will get code execution and code execution will defeat the post uh, facto uh, gossiping. There's a spectrum of how useful uh, ex post facto uh, uh, is, and I think the good checks and database is over here where it's really not particularly useful. Uh, CT is somewhere in the middle. CT does not stop you from code execution, but on the other hand, I do download stuff over HTTPS and then execute it all the time. I pipe it into a uh, bash, we all do. Uh, so, uh, and then, um, Things like messaging uh, have a better claim to know that there's no uh, full system compromise uh, in split view attack case. But anyway, there's a lot of use cases over here that really need something that they can check before they accept the proof. And that's witness co-signing. Uh, witness co-signing is not a thing we came up with. Uh, it's a thing that's uh, been published in the, in the literature for years now. Uh, and I'm here um, today to try to drive uh, the point that we need to build such a network and we need to make it a, a public network that we can all use for our applications. <coughs> but first, quickly, what are um, uh, witnesses? Uh, so we think of witnesses as third-party cosigners. So it's not a thing you run yourself for your system. It's another entity, another um, uh, company, another organization that runs a service uh, that when you have a three head, uh, the head of your new Merkle tree at size uh, N, you go to them and say, hey, 
is this consistent with what you've seen previously from me? If so, please put a signature on it so that we can tell others it, you, you, don't, you shouldn't take only our, um, um, our word for it. Th if you trust the witnesses, that's, uh, that's how you know. They're reputational units. We're back to reputation. A witness that does not stake its reputation is not very useful because users need to trust that the witness will have consequences if it colludes with the log and lies. So they need to be well-known and named Ooh. entities. They will be part of a N of, they can be part of a N of a M policy. Uh, so you don't need to uh, rely on every witness to be constantly uh, online, nor do you need to trust that all witnesses are, uh, are hon honest. The client can say, oh, I'm going to trust that when three out of 10 witnesses have said, yeah, this, this is not a split, uh, a split view. Uh, and three of mm, 10 means uh, both better than uh, one of 10, but at the same time, even if two, three, four witnesses go offline, you can keep getting co enough co-signatures to keep your log moving forward. Um, they're very lightweight. Uh, so uh, the storage requirements of a witness are in the tens of bytes uh, because they only need to hold on to the last thing they've seen. They will get everything, uh, including the, co the consistency proof from whoever wants the, um, uh, the new witness co-signature and they will give back the new things, save the, the value, tens of bytes per, uh, per log. So the goal is to make them very cheap to operate because, final point, we need them to operate for a very long time. And all of the concerns you've heard about on the city ecosystem are present uh, in this ecosystem too. We're hoping that this will be a little easier because they're way cheaper to run, as in Raspberry Pi level uh, uh, cheap uh, to run. Great, so that's what witnesses are. And to make the pitch for we really need this and it's going to be great wh when we have them, I'm going to talk about what can you do when you have one of these uh, networks. And they allow producing what I like to call spicy signatures. They will never let me call them uh, that in any official document, but this is my presentation, so they're called spicy signatures. Uh, and a spicy signature uh, is nothing else than a bundle uh, of an inclusion proof, uh, well, let's start from the top. Assigned checkpoint, which is the word we use for a three head. So just the, the Merkle uh, root, the size of the, uh, the tree, and a signature uh, over it. Then the inclusion proof all the way down to the uh, Merkle leaf. Uh, and then the N of M uh, co-signatures on, um, on that checkpoint. When you have all of these things together, and they can look something like this, or you know, this is just a strom and it's not a format we're specifically proposing, but uh, a size, a bunch of hashes that uh, constitute um, uh, inclusion proof, uh, and then a checkpoint, which is the name of the log, the size of the uh, three, uh, three at the time the checkpoint was taken, uh, the, ha the hash at the top, the signature of the log, and then one signature per each witness. So this is all the thing you need for uh, a spicy signature. Now, uh, what's the nice thing about this? You can give this to a client, and they can verify it completely offline. Another problem of gossip and uh, local consistency is that they're abstraction breaking. We are trying to deploy to systems that probably already understand what a digital signature is. L they, they already understand, oh, it, you, there's a public key and I use the public key to verify the thing that I, uh, I received. And then we tell them, hey, wouldn't it be nice if your thing was um, uh, T-logged, was in a transparency log? And they say, yeah. And then they ask, what do I need to run? What do I need to implement? What things do I need to, well, we can tell them, you just need to use a different uh, signature verification algorithm. It's a very complex one. It does a lot of things, but it does all of them offline. Instead of having one public key, it has the public key of the log and of all of the witnesses it trusts that it will look for the um, N of M signatures from. Uh, and it does a bit of hashing and all that. But fundamentally, you just compact that into a single thing, and that's a signature. And instead of public key, you have that set of policies, et cetera, but it fits perfectly in the box, in the abstraction of signature verification. Don't have to call them spicy signatures. I'm sure we can come up with a perfectly boring name for that. Uh, finally, um, if uh, uh, we get witnesses that are synchronous, we can even generate these signatures um, in the, the same way that, in a close enough way to how we generate uh, regular signatures. So we can generate them synchronously. Uh, we still have to have network 
uh, and local storage because we will have to store the new size of the, the, the new uh, uh, tree and go to the witnesses and get things uh, co-signed. But usually network and storage on the server that's generating signatures is not a problem. Having it on the client, that's very fine then sometimes is prohibitive, but the client doesn't need any of that. Um, the server can still, if you have a batch script that signs something, you can put in there something that generates a spicy signature instead of a normal signature, and clients will be able to just verify that. And out of that, we get a transparency uh, log of all these uh, uh, entries that's resistant to split view attacks. So, <coughs> yes, um, it's gonna be great. Now, let's talk about this missing piece. Let's talk about what do we need to build concretely. Like, fantastic, you made the case for why that's, uh, that's useful. What do we, what does it have to be? So, the witness network is the one part of a transparency system that you can't build yourself. Uh, even if you're a large organization with all the resources in the world, you fundamentally cannot have multiple um, reputational units uh, that are believable externally inside your organization. So there will be an um, external um, a component to this. And building an ecosystem is capital H hard. Not for the crypto, not for the tech, but for all of the things you've heard about in CT and all of the social uh, and why should I rely on Yao uh, uh, reasons. Uh, so I acknowledge that this is going to be hard. I think we need it and I think it's the smallest thing we can, uh, the smallest amount of known control that we can uh, design into a transparency system. Uh, so uh, the ecosystem can have specific policies, uh, claims, records, distribution, monitoring, all of that can, you can rebuild for yourself, but I think we'll need to have a network of um, witnesses, and I don't think we'll get to build many networks, one for this project and one for that project. I think we need to build uh, one unified one because that's already hard enough. Uh, and then we should share it also because the um, incremental cost of adding a log to a witness is basically zero. Great, so that was all the soft part and then I will very quickly run through um, uh, te uh, technical, um, uh, technical suggestions because we have some formats uh, we like for uh, some things uh, and you know it's not particularly important what the formats are uh, the more important thing is we agree on the semantics and what witnesses are and the fact that we need to build one such network and that we pool resources to do that. But yeah, uh, we have, you've seen it already in the presentation, we have a format for uh, signing notes. That's just a short uh, Italian uh, poem I like. Uh, but it's just some text uh, and then signatures, one per line. Uh, I come from the uh, Go project and we really like uh, textual formats. Uh, then checkpoints. Checkpoints are a specific format for uh, things to put in a signed note that says that's the log, uh, that's the log, that's the size, that's the uh, half of the tree head. That's it. And here's a signature. Uh, and then timestamp co-signatures. So these are the ones that um, your witnesses will make. Uh, they add a signature which starts with a timestamp and then signs both the timestamp and the um, and the uh, checkpoint body so that you know when <coughs> that was produced, which is useful for reasons. Um, and finally, we have a work in progress witness API, which is the way uh, you talk to a witness if it's a synchronous exchange. So it's a post request where you say, hey, I would like to add a checkpoint. Uh, I think that the old size you have is this. Here's a consistency proof from that old size to the new size. And here's a signed checkpoint for, uh, for this size. If the witness likes it, it will send back. As, uh, it will save this part, uh, and it will send back um, uh, a co-signature that the log can tap at the bottom uh, of the uh, checkpoint. And when it has enough of them, which they, it can fetch in parallel, it can send it back. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the goal is that anyone will be able to run a co-signed log. Uh, the co-signed log will not even have to be um, uh, have its own server. It can just be a set of files locally. Uh, which is what we're calling serverless logs, um, stealing the, uh, the term from the transphobic uh, folks, uh, producing uh, spicy signatures, which uh, I'm sure will not survive as a term, uh, and uh, possibly uh, synchronously. So 
Some of this is already adopted. The checkpoint format is already used by the GoCheckSum database, by the SIGSUM project, and by the OmniWitness uh, network, uh, by the Trust Fabric uh, folks. Uh, and uh, some of it uh, we're still working on, spe especially the protocol parts. And join the break breakout session. Let's talk about how making this happen. Those are my contacts. Thank you very much. You do not. Uh, so as a witness, you just store, um, I'll go quickly back to this. As a witness, you just store the last checkpoint you've ever uh, signed. Then when you get this request, which is the only endpoint, not actually, but let's, to a degree of approximation, the only endpoint you expose, um, you check that the old value is the one you had before. So the next request will have an old value of 109482. Uh, this is the consistency proof. So the external party sends you the consistency proof. You don't even have a Merkle tree. Mm -hmm. uh, you just run the, uh, uh, the proof verification. And if the proof checks out, you commit the new thing to this, and then you send back a signature. That's all you've implemented. Uh, nothing else. You don't store everything you've signed. You don't store leaves.